Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on the FX Pantera and in this one we're going to be carrying out a full disassembly of the rifle. Now there's already a few disassembly videos on YouTube, but I need to take the rifle apart anyway to have a look at the hammer spring and the trigger, so I thought I'd bring you along. This one is slightly different as well as it is a sub 12 pound rifle, so there may be some subtle changes here and there. With that said, the first thing we'll do is check the reg pressure. So on this rifle, it's about 82 bar, as you can see there on the digital gauge. The next thing we're going to do is degas the rifle. To do that, we'll just take the bottle off. And with the bottle off, the air reservoir has been depleted, although there will still be pressure inside the regulator. So as you can see here, we're still reading 82 bar. To get rid of that, we just need to fire the rifle in a nice safe direction. And after that's done, if we take a look at the gauge on the side again, you can see that's now reading zero. So we're safe to proceed. The next thing we'll do is remove the barrel and the shroud. So the first thing I'll do is unscrew the shroud. And with that unscrewed, we can gently pull it out, making sure not to scratch the shroud on the rail. With that done, the next thing we can do is remove the barrel. Before we remove the barrel though, we are just going to double check that there's no air in the plenum, and then we'll dry fire the rifle again, just to make sure that there's no residual air trapped inside the rifle. As you may or may not know, the plenum on these rifles is around the barrel, so you cannot remove the barrel without degassing the rifle. With that said and done, we're gonna loosen these two clamp screws on the front clamp here, using a two and a half mil Allen key. And with those loose, we can remove the barrel retention screws, which is just these two grub screws, one on either side of the block. With those done, we can now gently pull the barrel out the front of the rifle. Nice and carefully. And there we have the barrel removed. Now, obviously, this is my solid HFT 500 barrel that I machined up to fit the rifle. So we'll put that over to one side. Next up, to make the rifle a little easier to manipulate for the camera, we're going to remove the front rail. So to begin with, we'll loosen the two screws in the front of the block here. So we have one on this side and then another on this side. And that's done using a 3mm Allen key. With those removed, the next thing we'll do is remove the two screws. So one here and one here from the bottom piece there and that will allow us to remove this block entirely. We're going to be loosening these screws using a four millimeter Allen key. And then with those screws loose, we'll just pull the front block off there. Up next, we can use a two and a half mil Allen key to remove the six retention screws for the front rail itself. As you remove these, just make a little note you have two long ones and then one short one. The short one goes in the top hole and the two long ones go in the bottom. With those six screws removed, we can remove the front rail from the front of the block nice and carefully like so. And again, the front rail does have my steel piece in the end there. And that steel piece just gives this piece a bit of rigidity. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the grip by using a 5mm Allen key, just coming in the back there, then loosening the grip bolt. This is an Ergo Chubby grip, and on the Ergos they do have a hole in the back of the grip to allow you to put an Allen key in there. With that done, we'll remove the back section of the rifle, so the butt piece section here. To do that, the first thing we're going to do is remove these four bolts here using a 2mm Allen key, and that will allow us to remove the plastic covers. With those removed, we now need to remove the four securing screws. So we have one here and then one on the bottom, and then the same on the other side. So one here and then one on the bottom. We're gonna be doing that using a three millimeter Allen key. I like to get them started using an L-shaped Allen key. So we'll just crack them loose using this. Then we'll move over to a ball-ended Allen key to remove these ones in the bottom a little easier. And then with the top two removed, we can just use a ball-ended Allen key just to remove the two in the bottom. And you want to take each bolt out about halfway, then you can pull the stock back and remove them all the way.
and as you take the butt piece off just make sure that you don't lose the small o-ring in the end here so the way this works is that the bottle is pressurized over here there's a drilling up here which we'll see a little later then a drilling all the way through up into this back piece here the air flows through this hole and then into the back of the block through this hole here so that's how the air gets from the back of the rifle to the front with that done we'll put the main block to one side and focus our attention on this piece for the moment right then moving on to the back piece there's really not much we can take off this but we can take the cheek piece and the butt piece off by just loosening the thumb screws pulling them out some of the way Then we can remove both the cheek piece and the butt pad. It does look like the cheek piece is flippable, so you can put the cheek piece on either the right hand side or the left hand side by just removing this and putting it onto the other side. So there that is there. Next thing we'll do is remove the foster fitting. And to do that we're just going to be using a 14mm ring spanner just to crack that loose and then unscrew it by hand. This obviously does have the standard FX plunger in the bottom and also the standard FX face seal on the bottom of the foster fit in there. Up next we'll remove the bottle adapter, so this piece here, and that's done using a 24mm spanner, nice and carefully, they are normally done up quite tight, and the first time I took this one off, it did have some Loctite behind it, so just be aware of that. If you can, what you want to do is put this piece here in a vise with some nice soft jaw protection, Crack the nut loose, then just do it by hand. And there we have that piece there. And the last thing we'll do is separate this bottom section from this top section. To do that, we're just going to be removing these four screws here using a 3mm Allen key. To be honest, there's probably no reason you're ever going to need to take this apart, but some of you may be interested to see what's beneath it. And with those four screws removed, we have an O-ring in the top here, and that O-ring seals in this hole here. We do have a blanking plug on this side as well, which we could take out if we wanted to. We could do that using a two and a half mil Allen key. Like so, and then that does have an O-ring on the base of it as well. The only thing that we're not going to be removing is these two screws here, and those two screws allow us to separate these two pieces here. These screws are done up incredibly tight and we've used in some Loctite, so we're not going to be removing them in this video. But there we have it, that's that part fully complete, so we'll move this over to one side and bring back the main block. With the buttstock fully disassembled, we can now move on to the main block. So to begin with, we'll remove all the pressure side of the rifle, then we'll move on to the mechanical side. To begin with, we'll remove this gauge manifold here, and that's done by removing these four screws using a 3mm Allen key. As you take this off, just make sure the two O-rings, so one here and one here, don't get lost. They are standard round O-rings, although they're conformed into a slot to make them sort of this oblong shape. There we have it. We could remove the gauges if we wanted to by simply removing the gauge covers, getting a spanner across the flats and loosening the gauge, but we'll leave them on as they are. Next thing we'll do is remove this front block and the plenum. So to begin with, we'll remove the front block using a 4mm Allen key. Just to remove these two screws here. They are done up quite tight so I am just using a T-handled Allen key to do that. We can put that over to one side. Next thing we can do is unscrew the plenum. Nice and simply like so. And then that exposes the barrel support here. Which can be loosened using a 19mm spanner. Next we'll remove the valve from the rifle, and the valve is under this piece here. To remove this piece we just need to use a set of snap ring pliers, go in the holes there, crack it loose. Once it's loose you can either unscrew it by hand, or if it's still a little tight just use a set of tweezers. Get in there and unscrew it. This piece does have an o-ring around it, so that piece there. Next thing we can do is remove the valve return spring and also the valve. So there's the valve pin along with the seal. And then finally we can remove the seat. To remove the valve seat I'm just going to use one of my tools that's been muzzle fired. 
So that just pushes in the end of the valve. We can screw that up and then just pull it out. Nice and simple. So there we have it. There's the valve. When it's all built up in the rifle, the valve pin itself goes through the end there. And then as the hammer hits the valve, that opens that out and allows air to rush through this hole here, through this gap here and into the transfer pole. Nice and simple. On the front of the block we do have a couple brass plugs, these two plugs here, and if we remove one of them I'll show you what's underneath. So we remove them using a 3mm allen key, and underneath those there's just a passageway with an o-ring in the base of the threads. These brass pieces here are used to blank off holes that are used in other models. The next thing we're going to do is remove the regulator, and to get to the regulator we need to remove the trigger plate. And then this rear one using a 4mm allen key. As you remove the trigger plate, just make sure that this small spring here doesn't get lost. So we'll take that out using a set of tweezers. And beneath that there's a 3mm ball bearing which we can gently tap loose. So there that is there. Next we could remove the regulator if we wanted to, although the trigger is a little bit in the way so we're going to be removing that first. To do that we'll remove these three capping screws here. And that's done using a 1.5mm allen key. And then if we come from this side we can use a 1.5mm allen key to just push the trigger pins out. If you didn't have a 1.5mm allen key you could always use something like a paper clip. Just something nice and thin to push the pins out. As you remove the last one, this one here, just be careful as the trigger seal will be loose now. So that just knocks out like so. So there it is. With the trigger out of the way, the next thing we can do is remove the regulator. So to begin with, we'll use a 2.5mm allen key to remove the reg adjuster screw. Now, this is a sub 12 pound rifle, and from the factory, these adjuster screws normally have a sort of anti tamper plug banged into the hex head of the adjuster screw there. To get those out, all I do is take a nice sharp pointy thing, heat it up with like a lighter or something like that, push it into the plastic and wait for it to cool. Once it's cooled, you can normally just lever out the plastic plug with no problems whatsoever. So that's how I remove the anti-tampers on these regulators. With the adjuster screw removed, we can now remove the body of the regulator using a 5mm allen key to get in the body there and simply unscrew it. And as you unscrew that, just make sure that you don't drop the piston with all the Belleville washers on the bottom there. And there we have the Belleville stack of the piston there. And this is the new style regulator with the four holes around the body of the regulator and then the brass piston. So this piece here, brass piston with a Delrin tip. And the last thing I'll mention about the regulators is the like all FX regs, they do have an O-ring inside the body which seals around this outer diameter. So you're probably never going to be able to see it on camera, but just past the threads there is an O-ring roof with an O-ring pressed into it. With that done, the last thing we can remove in relation to the pressure is this blank on the bottom using a 4mm allen key. And there we have it. That blank just is held in place with a doughty washer. And as you take the plug out, just make sure that you don't lose the doughty washer on the base. With that all said and done, that's pretty much all the pressurised components removed from the block. The only other thing that I wanted to mention is that on this side of the block we have the bleed hole for the regulator, as well as a small capping screw. Beneath this capping screw is a small Delrin or plastic seal. So if that's leaking, that plastic seal there has failed and needs to be replaced. If you have air coming out of the bleed hole in the side of the regulator, so from this hole here, one of the O-rings inside the regulator has failed. Typically, if you've got air coming out of this hole here, it's either this O-ring on the base of the piston, this O-ring on the inside of the reg body, or the internal O-ring inside the block. But with that all said and done, we can start work on the mechanical aspects of the block, the first thing we're going to remove is the power wheel. We're going to remove that using a 2.5mm allen key. And then as we remove it, just make sure that you don't lose either of the two springs or the two small ball bearings. 
there we have two ball bearings there. And then in these two holes here we have two springs. And to get those out the easiest way to do it is just to use a small set of tweezers. Or you could use a magnet, that's equally as easy. But there we have it. There's the two small springs there, so I'll put them safely over to one side. Before we go any further, I do want to mention something very, very briefly. So if we tip the block backwards and forwards, you can hear a number of things rattling about. That's normal with these blocks in the sub 12 pound rifles. There's no constant hammer spring tension on the hammer, so it is free to float backwards and forwards. Now, if we had the trigger sear still installed onto the rifle, you could cock the rifle and you'll still hear sort of a faint rattle emanating from inside the block. Again, that's perfectly normal, and I'll show you what that is as we take it apart. So to begin with, we'll remove this screw in the base using a 1.5mm Allen key. And with that removed, we can just tip this piece out of the side. So nice and simply like so. And then we can tip the hammer, hammer spring and hammer spring shuttle from the rear of the rifle. Now this is the hammer, our hammer spring, and then if we take a look at this piece here, this is the piece that you can hear rattling up and down the block. So it's just this floating spring guide here. That's a very common question that you get with the FX's, on the sub-12 rifles at least. So if we take a look at that there, you can see that that floats backwards and forwards within the assembly. With that done, there's only a few things left to go on the block. The first thing we're going to do is tip the block up and then remove the detent for the pellet probe, which is this screw here. That's done using a 2mm Allen key. If we take it out there, you can see it's just one of these screws with the ball bearing captive inside. Next thing we can do is if we come in through this hole here, we can remove the pin that joins the cocking arm to the pellet probe. To get this out fully, you may need to just crack the arm loose a little and then use a 1.5mm Allen key to remove the pin itself. So there it is there. The next thing we'll do is remove the cocking arm from the rear of the rifle. To do that, we'll remove the capping screw using a 2mm Allen key. So just coming in the top of the block there, removing that using a 2mm Allen key. And then we can remove the pin using a 1.5mm Allen key. With that removed, we can remove the pellet probe, or the cocking arm I should say, from the side of the rifle. Up next, we can tip the block over and loosen and remove this small grub screw in the back here using a 1.5mm Allen key. And then if we gently tip the block up, we can knock the cap piece for the back out and also the pellet probe. If we want to, we can remove the pellet probe from the pellet probe carrier. And that's simply done by using a 1.5mm Allen key, loosening this screw here, then removing the pellet probe from the front there. It looks to be the same pellet probe that's in a dream tech, although without actually having them side by side, I wouldn't be able to tell you for certain, but it certainly looks like the one found in the Dreamline series of rifles. And that's pretty much it. The last thing we can remove is this cover piece from the side of the block, and that's done by removing the front screw using a 1.5mm Allen key. Just removing that screw there. And then we can remove the rear one using a 2mm Allen key. Once both of those are out, we can push the plastic piece out from this side. Nice and carefully. And there we have it. There's the block pretty much fully disassembled. Right then, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. That's the block fully disassembled. So we've removed everything that we wanted to remove from the rifle. And we're left with a bare block and individual components. What I'm going to do now is just go through the rifle, clean everything up and make some spring guides for the hammer spring and also give the trigger a little polish. Before you go though, I thought I'd just give you my thoughts on the block itself. And if I'm honest with you, I'm really quite impressed with this block. It's fairly complex and very nicely machined. Whether you like FX products or you don't like FX products, you have to admit that they produce a very clean, very well machined block. And the components themselves are finished off to a very high standard. In my opinion at least, the only thing holding them back in the sub £12 market is the barrels. If they were to do a run of these rifles with either a CZ or maybe a Lothar Wolfer barrel, I really do think that they'd be hard to beat. 
The liner system seems to work quite well in FAC rifles and high power stuff, but for the sub 12 pound market and maybe the lower power markets, I do think a traditional barrel is better suited. This rifle with our Air Arms Lofer Wolfer barrel on it is absolutely blisteringly accurate. I'm not saying that all solid barrels are going to be as accurate as this one, but I've had quite a few FX rifles now and none of them have kept the STX liner system on. But that's just me and my rifles. But for now guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.